Uh, my name is Carl Martin, and I'm the founder of More Than We. Um, so can you tell me a bit more about yourself and a bit about More Than We, please? Oh, blimey. Um, so a bit about me. Well, I've been working in tech now for 10 years. Um, I kind of, when I was at university, I trained as like a designer slash developer and then realized that I didn't really have the patience to push pixels and write code. And so I kind of went on this basically 10 year journey of trying to work out what the hell I do. Um, but the most consistent thing has always been, uh, a real fascination with people. Um, uh, and so that's kind of manifested in a whole bunch of different ways. Like I was originally drawn in the early parts of my career to the world of brand and advertising and kind of like moving people and motivating people and inspiring people. And then a little bit disillusioned with the world of advertising, then moved into more of the kind of the, the world of products. So product design applications, like real, like utility basically. And in that world, it's trying to understand like why someone would use an app or a service um uh, what, uh and and subsequently if actually whether something is valuable to someone whether it's valuable to a business uh so i've always got my kicks out of that bit uh and then the final part which actually kind of manifested mo more in um, when i was actually i was living in new york um, for two years um the kind of the nature or the notion of community and so for me like community is two parts one is um the nature of like the, the company that that uh that you work for like that's a community in itself and how to how to contribute um and invest in the culture of those com uh community of that as a community um and then the second part is much more that kind of notion of your network like your industry like meeting people out in the big wide world which i've always done inherently and naturally it's always been quite instinctive um but actually really embracing that and recognizing that actually is a real meaningful skill um and so when I when I talk about my career, I say I, I talk about I, I don't I don't label myself as like a designer or a product manager. Like I talk about the fact that I've uh, I have a strong sensibility for building at the intersection of product, brand, and community. Uh, and ultimately, that's what's kind of led me to 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 building my current company more than we. So for for want of a better turn of phrase, like more than we is essentially kind of like a relationship management platform for young professionals. Um, uh for me like uh, if um if if linkedin is supposedly the home of our like professional relationships online then actually i think it's uh i think that's a pretty terrible representation of <laughs> of of what it means to have a relationship nowadays in, in the world of work which for me is um about like being helpful creating value for people uh, making introductions being able to like uh, stay on top of like we're, we're meeting more and more people nowadays and so actually it's getting harder to to not just like stay on top of everyone that you're meeting and knowing where you met them when you met them but also uh, um, but also uh, 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 knowing like where to focus your energy like actually yeah like you know you've got a thousand connections on LinkedIn but there's probably only 20 people that are really important to you yeah, yeah. Um, and so basically, how do we basically create tools that help people be better at building relationships? The world of work is about people. They inspire us from above and support from below. Rallying around us, they provide the foundations to grow. But in this world of shameless self-promotion, are we beginning to lose touch with this notion? See, the reason I'm super interested in this is someone with a challenge, let's call it, because I don't like the word disability. Mm. <laughs> um, as someone with a challenge, definitely is someone who has been more challenged as of late with my neck being the way that it is. Yeah. Networking is the worst for me. Yeah. I've always loved it. It's always been something that's been really interesting and I've always enjoyed it and I've always kind of relished making those connections. I once did yeah. a questionnaire thing at work and I came out as a wooer which is basically someone who likes to be friends with lots of people and doesn't really put much into those relationships but it makes me perfect for like networking apparently oh, okay. um, so I've always loved it and it's become a lot harder recently and I've kind of really discovered that actually if I foster you know a couple of really strong relationships it's better than spreading myself thinly yeah. Um, and it's kind of that's only come about because I can't do the kind of mass networking anymore. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 
Um, and it's that's why I'm kind of extra especially interested in what you're doing because I think you're also looking at people as humans rather than as sort of you know just workhorses, which I think yeah. LinkedIn has become a little bit kind of it's a bit kind of job focused. It's very sort of yeah. I know that's what it's supposed to be, but I kind of like what you're doing because it's more people centric. Well, that's so. So it's funny. Like if you look back to the the yonder days of of LinkedIn and they, they've some of their early kind of fundraising decks were available online. And actually they were born out of the premise where it was like actually the power of relationships and the power of connectivity mm. and the network. Um, but only they made a conscious decision at one point, actually a conscious decision that was probably driven by investors, uh, basically the powers that be, where they were like, well, you need to grow quicker, you need to have more engagement, whatever that might be, you need to get more revenue. Um, and basically that led them down the path to selling their soul to recruiters. Um, and at the same time, not really thinking meaningfully about what it mean, what this relationship part of it really is. Actually, yes, they basically became the biggest online CV database. And actually, mm-hmm. that's where they, they make most of their money now. You look at things like LinkedIn groups are apparently about to be phased out. Um, they deprioritize kind of relationships and metadata and tagging from the service uh, early last year. Um, like many like kind of more social oriented products like your Twitters and Facebooks and all that sort of stuff. It's all about the volume of content you put out there uh, as well as the number of eyeballs that are getting, uh, are engaging with or seeing that content as well, purely for the, an ad, an ad based model. Um, and I kind of think it's broken. Uh, I think that just, I suppose like anecdotally is seeing more and more people now, like, uh, creating these little micro communities on things like WhatsApp and Slack, mm. where it's really small, intimate groups of people in industry talking and discussing about stuff and helping each other out. Yeah. Um, and I think that what that that is is one is I think that when you when you're direct about asking for help or sharing knowledge or seeking some sort of support, <clears throat> you have a much greater chance of um, of getting someone to help you out. Um, whereas if you just share something on Twitter and say, "Hey, does anyone?" know anyone who does this or can anyone help me connect to this person, the likelihood of someone wanting to help because it doesn't feel directed at them is actually yeah. kind of reduced. Um, and so I think there's a massive opportunity to to be, build tools that I kind of talk about this idea of intentional communication. Um, actually, uh, there was uh, a woman who's a senior reporter at the Daily Beast called Taylor Lorenz. She recently talked about this notion of um, the a, a huge trend that will happen in the next year is the the breaking away from of media from social media um and what that kind of trend will see is more and more people just like uh social products becoming much more focused on what they were born out of which is the idea of like how do we use the internet to better communicate um and so a huge part of my hypothesis of our business is to basically um, believe that uh, if you take away all the crap, I mean, like ed- anyone looks at LinkedIn nowadays and it's clickbaity content, like yeah. people are kind of weaponizing humanity and authenticity to, to kind of get engagement and comments and likes. And um, I, I honestly b- believe like with that and then advertising, like people will pay for something, even if just like a couple of quid a month for something that creates really acute uh, and significant value for them yeah. when they need to use it. Um, rather than having to deal with all the noise that comes with something like, uh, well, any product that's got a news feed, basically. I've discovered recently that there seems to be, for my industry, lots of sort of smaller breakaway things, but there's nothing really for everyone. I've noticed there's kind of um, sort of things that connect people in the creative industry quite well, but actually yeah. if you're not in the creative industry, you're screwed, basically. Mm. Um so yeah, it's really. I think it's really interesting what you're doing. Is there a particular sort of event that inspired it? Something that you experienced, or was it just a general kind of hate of? Uh, uh, no, the, the, there wasn't like a moment. I think that basically the the. I mean, there's a there's there's a few there's a few pieces. Um, one is I I felt that there. When I when I look back at my career, for example, like in the ten years of my career, like I've never, I've only ever got jobs through like strong relationships that I've built. Um, some of those are things that have like started on Twitter and then they've built into something in real life, mm-hmm. or um, or people I've met in one capacity and then five years later they've offered me a job type thing, and and 
even though I don't, I don't think they're as a, in the, especially in the early part of my career, there was never conscious. I just like spending good time with like cool people. Um, I kind of, <clears throat> there was no expectation of any value from those things. And over the years, what I've realized is how, um, how rare, I suppose, in many instances that people, um, build relationships but but without the expectation of some sort of value from it mm-hmm. um but also how actually that mentality is super coachable is super teachable and actually believe that in many ways technology could play a role in shaping people to operate more in that capacity um so i suppose it's a yes it's a, a big chunk of my career but then at the same time i think that when you look at like the world today like present state of affairs is um the ways in which we uh, interact and build careers is pretty rapidly changing. Um, More and more people heading into contracting and freelance world. Um, More and more people kind of becoming increasingly nomadic and nomadic in the sense of nomadic in industry, nomadic geographically. Um, And so actually there's a great emphasis on the importance of those relationships and building really strong relationships uh, across boundaries, across industries, but also not uh, um, like working hard to kind of diversify the people around you. Uh, it's, a, it's a huge frustration of mine, not in terms of I've struggled because as a as a as a white educated privileged man, um, I've been afforded a lot more opportunities than the majority of people. Uh, and so actually, my frustration is knowing that by being who I am. Uh, it's allowed me to get opportunities that, that other people haven't. And so how how can we start to use technology in ways to um, diversify uh, networks and, and, and in turn diversify um, access to opportunities for people? Uh, and that can be for, for any anything along the spectrum. I mean, for me, with people who are challenged, uh, disabled, differently abled, um, uh, at the extreme ends of the spectrum, there's the ability to just like access buildings of work never mind even like the commute and all those sorts of things and so um uh for me is changing physical infrastructure is a is a long and laborious process but actually if we can develop tools that make um accessibility of opportunity and accessibility of the the ability to do work um uh even better then actually that's like a really positive and meaningful start do you know what I find really interesting? What I found really interesting since I was diagnosed is I actually, the way that I network is different in that I sort of, I seem to make closer connections with people. It's almost like they become friends who might lead to potential work and I never think yeah. of them as potential work. Yeah. Um, and similarly to you, I just, I don't interview really anymore because I think it's actually, it's it's broken down those walls where people feel like they can make conversation with me that isn't about work you know there's nothing yeah. worse than when you go somewhere and someone says to you what do you do yeah that's the first question and it's like yeah. That's, yeah, not that's, what, that's not what i'm about you know and it's it's kind of actually it's given me something different to talk about it's given me something that people warm to me and i make closer connections more more quickly yeah. and actually not everyone's lucky like that like some people are stuck in jobs where they can only talk about their jobs to people they network with and totally they're missing out on that deeper connection yeah yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think um, something that I, one of the kind of the values or the principles, whatever you want to call it, of my business is to kind of celebrate people over talent. Um, and what I mean by that is that uh, in the world, um, the world of work, there's such an emphasis on like the skill, the, the the thing that you do, the job title, the 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 the, the fundamentals of your everyday job, uh, and um, and what uh, yeah, specifically what you how you apply yourself but actually for me is uh hey well i mean a, a, another example in the, in the context of my career is you look at like all the companies that i've worked for down the years and i work for like agencies and i worked with um big brands like i worked for burberry for three years and then i worked for this this kind of agency style company studio um based out in new york called us two um and you ask anyone that I've worked with any of those companies and very few will ever talk about like uh, like a, a tangible fundamental thing that I delivered. Like <laughs> it kind of hurts me a lot sometimes. Right? Like, <laughs> but like that, that one thing that I really loved. And, it, and, and, and for me, it wasn't like I, uh, I didn't have the opportunity or there wasn't things that I was delivered. But actually, 
um, the impact I've had more often than not is actually always almost been on culture and the environment. Yeah. It's about creating a place or space that people feel like they could be themselves. Um, again, like every leaving card or like leaving uh, diary, whatever it is that people kind of give, like people are always commenting on like, oh, you, you made me feel like I could be this person or I could do these things. Um, but actually, like, where does that exist on a CV? Like, yeah. where... How do like how do I how do I talk about that in a in a in a meaningful um, way with employers? Like that's kind of devoid. So like never mind the the world of um, of oh like here's my passions or here's my hobbies. Like that stuff's been around for ages, but it's so anecdotal. Yeah. Um, the thing that I think is really compelling and interesting is things like people's emotional intelligence, um, yeah. uh, their empathy. Um, the ways in which they interact and the ways in which they contribute to companies way beyond just the, the their day-to-day work. And that's something that someone would never know about you until they either meet you at interview, if they're lucky, yeah. or until they work for yeah. you and they realise it. Yeah. Um, and so that it's recognising that um, that that is going to take time to find a way to do that in a, in a, uh, to share those things in a meaningful way. I mean, like for like I, I've actually built most of my career through Twitter and that's basically allowed me to, even though it does allow me to do all the things that I, that are important to me and part of my personality. Like I've always in many ways, like challenged the traditional notion conventions of masculinity. So I've always been very kind of like emotional and like vulnerable, like all these things, all these qualities that kind of are so counterintuitive to what you might expect from a big, like chunky skinhead. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but, um, uh, but yes, for me, it's like actually Twitter's allowed me to kind of have a voice um, in sharing more of who I am and, and how I operate, which actually like nothing else has really afforded me the opportunity. So um, I think that there is space for for products and apps and technology to to um, to help us share more of that side of ourselves, basically. I think that's a really good point, actually, because I think more and more employees, employers, sorry, are checking social media accounts, like external yeah. ones, you know, Twitter and stuff. And there's been kind of outcry about them doing that at certain times because you really have to be careful about what you're putting. But I think mm-hmm. it can actually be really beneficial if you are sharing real character and real personality. I mean, massively, massively. That's where I get a lot of my kind of emails from is people will check me out on Twitter and kind of see what I've done and see what I'm interested in and then contact me because yeah. it makes you more multidimensional. Yeah. No, as I mean, I mean, as again, like the fact that, I mean, me and you connected off the back of the big life fix, right? Yeah. Like, I think um, uh, there, there, there was there was little there to, to illustrate your capacity as a designer or a creator. <laughs> there was nothing from that, but actually, um, like your qualities as a person really shone through in that. Um uh, there was a, for me is like yeah like not just like a nice human being but someone who wants to get better, cares about getting better like cares about other people and so um, actually the not everyone is going to get a, uh, a high production values documentary made about their life <laughs> um, but how do we how do we how do, how do we scale that how do we try and find yeah. ways for people to to really share who they are and have confidence in that that it's not going to uh, impact their ability to get work. Um, for example, I, I kind of in, on the side, I do this thing called hustle help, which is basically where, um, I try and basically use my privilege as a, as a, as a guy who's been lucky to build a big network, like here in the U S to try and help people get where they need to go and meet the people they want to meet. And, um, uh, and, uh, actually I, I got an email from someone recently who, um, was a, um, was a guy who, and he is, um, he's, so he's in transition and he's also autistic. Um, uh, and so the notions of like, um, uh, face value at the moment, he looks like a, just a regular white guy. And so actually, um, you might make an assumption that he is a man of significant privilege, but actually that's completely counterintuitive. Yeah. Um, uh, and so actually like his, um, his worry is, uh, so at the moment he works primarily in kind of the world of government and wants to move away f- from, uh, public to private sector. And he's just basically worried that, um, in going through this transition, uh, and also because of his disability, um, that he's simply not going to be able to, to get that type of work. And so, um, it's, uh, I think that, that there's uh, a lot to be said for, and actually from, from getting to know this guy, um, recently, 
like like he's phenomenally smart um such a really good human being uh that actually like any company would be lucky to have that and it's just mm -hmm. sad that um because of these two kind of parts of his identity um that might actually mean that he's discriminated against and can't get kind of his dream career which for me is i'd love to get us to a a place where um we change that in a real meaningful way good on you that's all Thanks. i can say I'll try <laughs> um so you've been a startup now probably for the last year couple of years just over a year yeah um I have a bit of an issue with the startup culture sometimes in the fact that it's often really kind of glamorized and that it's, mm. you know, I think it's it's been born out of something that's really interesting. Suddenly there are all these people that can't, you know, find the jobs that they want. So they're kind of making changes and making their own lives and their own careers and their own workplaces for other people to join, which I think is fantastic. Yeah. But I also think sometimes it's kind of, it's glamorized as being, you know, the easy way to get the job you want. And we all know yeah. it's not that. Um, yeah. What have you kind of what have you learned kind of starting something from scratch? What advice would you offer to someone else who was starting a business? Oh, um, yeah, it's definitely not for the faint of heart. Um, I think uh, for, I think for me, I've 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 felt it in a in a way just because, what, and I've always been very honest about this that I think that I've built a career on uh, my strengths as you should, but when those strengths are only used for their face value. So for example, um, uh, as I say, I've always been a really good networker, always been a very confident speaker, always been a pretty decent communicator and that manifests in like writing or in pitch decks or whatever it might be. Um, and so in my career, I've only ever felt like I've been um, using like this really small part of who I am. Mm. But actually, that becomes super naturally to me. So actually, I've always felt relatively comfortable in the jobs that I've done. Um, I don't think I've ever really tested an extreme. And so actually, going from a really, really well-paid job living in New York City to having next to no income, uh, paying myself like less than seven grand a year and sleeping on people's sofas has been um, a pretty dramatic shift. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that, like like most people who who go through the process, they um, they'll have plenty of occasions where they want to give in and they want to sack it in. And and actually, I think that um, the thing that I've learned is l knowing and understanding that that's perfectly normal and natural. And actually, because yeah. I believe so much in my building, that yeah, I'll have those days, but I'll always sleep on it. I mean, there's there's literally been times where I've gone, no, I quit, like I'm done, yeah. and I'll go to bed, I wake up in the morning, and I'll be like, I right, I really love what I do. Yeah. Um, uh, but what's more is like, I think I'm finally, as I alluded to, uh, I was talking about earlier <clears throat> where I've always been, feel like I've always been using this really slim, slim subsection of my capacity. Actually now this does allow me to, to use a lot more of my brain and, and I do feel a lot more tested and challenged. Um, and so, uh, for people who kind of, um, want to explore the world of building a company, I think that, well, first and foremost, it's probably like how I started probably isn't the best way. Like. I withdrew my entire my entire US pension and basically tried to bang on myself while I worked out what the thing was. Actually, that probably wasn't the smartest idea I've ever had. Um, uh, but there's there's so many ways in which you can carry on doing stuff on the side. Like this nature of the side hustle, right? I mean, I definitely hate I hate the term side hustle. Um, <laughs> uh, but actually, there's stuff that you can do if you really give a shit. Then actually, like you'll you'll be willing to um, put like proper time into it in evenings or on weekends to try and shape this thing up. Mm -hmm. uh, but most important of all, and I think that's the thing that most people forget at such an early stage is like, you actually have to go and talk to the people who would only be like your customers or your users. Um, I've seen so many people who they go, Oh, this is a really solid idea. And actually I'm just going to, um, uh, I'm going to like m knock together a little design or even like pay someone to go and make something for me, like a prototype. And then I'll go and pitch to investors without even speaking to yeah, really uh, the people who will actually use it. Uh, and so being super fortunate enough where I spent two and a half years working for this product studio us two, which really gave me the education I needed to understand uh, what it takes to speak to users, um, what it takes to, um, to like create a process that allows you to um, bring an idea to life uh, and at the absolute heart of everything you do it has to be speaking to users 
Um, and so that's why now where I look where I am today, like I'm speaking to people and speaking to the people who are actually using my current product um, almost every day. Um, sometimes that's just the odd email feedback. There's other times where that'll be jumping on a Skype call for an hour or going and meeting someone for a coffee. Um, that's, um, that's something like the most meaningful like learning experience for, for bringing something to life. Um, and so as long as you're willing to do that and at the same time be willing to re- like make genuine sacrifices, um, you're kind of halfway there. I mean, I say halfway there, very nonchalantly. <laughs> um, uh, I think that if if they're two things that you're comfortable with, um, then that's then that's great. Uh, and at the same time, one of one of the big things that I've become more and more comfortable with is knowing that actually there'll come a time, even though I won't put like a label on it, um, there'll come a time when you know. So it's not working, uh, and whether that's in the current manifestation or whether it's just not going to work at all, um, and you basically have to just not be prepared to knock it on the head. Um, mm. Again, for me, there's not like a scenario in which uh, I'm prepared for. I just know there'll be a feeling, like, and if as long as I trust that feeling, like that gut feeling, um, then uh, I can sort of kind of brush myself down and said, look, I gave it my best shot. It wasn't the right product, right time, whatever it needs to be. And then move on to the next one. Um, but I think that most people either giving too early because actually it gets hard yeah. um, or they stick with something which like they've not validated with users and they stick with it for too long and actually they then get to a point where they put like blood, sweat and tears into it and it almost feels too, like you've committed too much to it to back it's out. too personal. Actually, you get people like that on Dragon's yeah. Den all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, 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 it's true, true. Well, I think I think what you're doing is great. I think you know it deserves the success that hopefully it will have, and you know I really hope you can change things and make a kind of mark because I think it's something that needs that shift, and and people are crying out for it. This, mm. you know, I've I've kind of noticed that people are wanting to make those connections, and people are opening themselves to those connections. When I go to places, more and more, it's it's less that kind of awkward networking. It's more chatting it's more not asking people's jobs it's more talking about them as people and yeah that's got to mean that you're moving in the right direction you're doing something that's needed surely so i really yeah. really hope it succeeds for you